Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Friday, the 16th of December. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by Joshua Barry. How are we getting on, Joshua? Good. Slightly warmer than last night, Derek, although not that oh, much yes. because it snowed in Glasgow uh, last wow. night. I know. I know. What, what's Rare. it like out in the streets? Well, it's that snow where it's not. It's a little bit Sloshy. like a little bit sleety, but um, yeah, okay. I've not sam I've not sampled it yet. I'll let you know. Well, we've been doing. Uh, we've done a temperature check yesterday. Uh, myself and Johnny Joshua. So uh, uh, I'm going to press you to to, to yep. uh, see what the temperature is. It's uh, minus six in uh, Warrington this morning. I don't know if you can see that. Is that, the we- is that the weather app you're using? It is the weather app. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Let us know what the temperature is where, where you are, folks. Uh, there was a, a, a guy yesterday. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot his name, but uh, in Alberta, in Canada, minus twenty eight. I believe it was. Or 24, I'm not quite sure, but it was minus 35 a few days ago, which is uh, absolute madness, really. Uh, ridiculous levels of cold. So, uh, yeah. yep, it's 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 frosty uh, again this morning. It's given um, me it's given me three degrees, Derek. Which is wow, very I know, but it doesn't feel it doesn't up. feel like three degrees. So, um, make of that well, what you will. Well, Matthew Ross uh, from Shetland says uh, it's three degrees there, so he's getting his shorts on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Al Al C says uh, four inches of snow in Dumblane. Wow, uh, quite incredible, really. Um, looks like we may have a a, a white Christmas. Uh, four inches, uh, Blair says, and, and Stirling as well in snow terms, but romantically not so good. Uh, just take extra care if you're heading out there, there, folks. As ever, it's an absolute ice rink where I'm here uh, in Warrington. I've not really seen any gritters whatsoever. Um, so uh, yeah, take care if you're heading out on the roads. Minus one in Norwich says uh, Ian icy as hell. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Jock yeah, gets in touch from France. Morning, guys. For sunny and freezing France, minus five here. Um, whereabouts in France are you, are you from, Jock? Let us know. Is it northern France or I'd imagine it will be if it's uh, uh, minus five. Uh, three degrees in raining in Rothsey. Uh, tropical over there uh, for origami dinosaur. And Denzel uh, gets in touch. Hi, Denzel. He says, there's snow here uh, in Gartaharn. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be a lot of snow all over the all over the shop at the moment. So, uh, yeah, it seems like we're moving into sledging weather. Are you a, a sledger, Joshua? Yeah, if, if the snow's there, Derek. But um, I don't think this is not sledging weather today in Glasgow. Anyway, no. we, you know, we've done almost three minutes of the weather. Let's speak about the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why people are tuning in, of course. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, the weather review. It's the Rangers review, of course. So let's talk Rangers. Before we do that, you can see the little Christmas offer. Uh, ticker below, folks. Uh, you can sign up to the website just now. Just one pound uh, for two months worth of content. Uh, head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. And it's great to talk about a Rangers win, Joshua. It didn't look like that, I've got to say, after the... <laughs> After uh, uh, for large spells of that that first half, um, Rangers, of course, uh, lining up a very surprising formation. You could say no Antonio Cholak or Leon King in the match day squad. We are, we are told afterwards that Leon King uh, was ill uh, and Antonio Cholak uh, was ruled out yesterday afternoon with a calf niggle. So they were not part of the squad. It uh, did see um, Adam Devine start at left back. We'll touch on him later on. Uh, a makeshift centre-back pairing of John Lundstrom and James Sands. We've seen Ryan Jack and Glenn Kamara uh, in midfield with uh, Malik Tillman and Ryan Kent supporting Fashion Sakala and Alfredo Morelos up top. And um, Hibs took the lead early, pretty early on. Ryan Porteous with a, a free header from a corner. Really, really poor goal defensively for Rangers to lose. We'll talk about the defensive uh, problems in a minute. Um, but then then equalised through Fashion Zakala. Well taken strike from the, the Zambian into the, the bottom corner. Uh, only to uh, lose another goal 53 seconds afterwards. Uh, really was a calamity. The ball played through the middle of Sands. And Lundstrom and Kevin Nisbet uh, finishing past Alan McGregor. But Rangers responded in the second half. Um, Mike Beale said that he had to calm the players down at halftime. There was a lot of anxiety in the air. They came out second half uh, and Hibs really offered very little uh, going forward. And Rangers dominated uh, from then on. Got the equaliser. Lovely goal. Love to see the Malik Tillman Joe Aribo style flick on at the near post from a corner. Uh, Ryan Jack with a great striker's instinct to, to bundle the ball home. And then uh, Malik Tillman with uh, great feet uh, to set up the winner. Alfredo Morelos with a tap in. 
and we've seen the knee slide once again, which was uh, fantastic to see. And that's how it finished, Joshua. 3-2 Rangers. Uh, what was your big, what was your main takeaways from the game? Yeah, um, I thought Hibbs controlled the first half and, and Michael Beale said that, um, he said, maybe I have to look at myself and say I put too much motion into the occasion and the players played like that. There was a lot of anxiety. Uh, you could tell when the game went 2-1 to Hibs, obviously not helped by the fact that Rangers had no um, out-and-out centre-backs. Um, James Sands has obviously played there a lot this season, but normally next to uh, uh, Leon King, Connor Golds and Ben Davies. Um, but it looked like Rangers didn't have any uh, fit out-and-out centre-halves, which um, was the case. I thought Hibs targeted... Their weaknesses pretty well. They got the ball forwards. I thought they were much, they were dangerous in transition. And one of the many things that Beale said in the press conference after was that Rangers started to win those duels and that allowed them to regain pressure. And Lee Johnston, contrastingly, said that the balls that Hibs played out from the back into their strikers weren't as good after half time. Um, but the, the piece that I've written this morning, Derek, which will be up on the website soon, kind of focuses on. On what Beal said that he changed at the break, Rangers uh, brought Ryan Jack slightly deeper. They moved Ryan Kent uh, slightly wider, Tillman slightly higher, and they had to basically go around Hibs. Hibs are sitting in, in a, a kind of mid block where there was a little bit of space in behind them, which obviously you see for Tillman's third goal. Um, and again, to, to quote what uh, Beal said after he spoke about Rangers playing closer together, quicker passes forward, more runs forward, um, because in the first half, it, didn't really look like the football that's been spoken about for this two-week period. And, and Beal said, uh, as you say, that the message was to calm down his, his squad at halftime. Mm. But as well as that, the, the question that he uh, went with in the press conference was, what type of football do we want to play? Uh, and as I say, although Hibs didn't have a lot of the ball in the first half, I thought they controlled it because they blocked Rangers passes um, forward into the fullbacks. Again, this is something you can read on the website soon. Um, I, I thought they yeah were 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 the team that was in the ascendancy. They looked more likely of adding a third at points than Rangers did of adding an equaliser before half time. Uh, but after half time, I don't think Hibs had a, a single chance in the second half. Rangers took advantage of of what they were doing, which was which you know being slightly passive, trying to get numbers around the ball. Um, and uh, and, and I, th I think Rangers did that really well after the break. So this the second half, much more of an, an indication, I think, of the type of football Beal wants to play, but he said he didn't think it was a good uh, performance uh, overall. Again, probably uh, given that lack of control in, in the first half. When you're playing without centre-backs, there it go. Um, that, that's probably going to happen. The second goal in particular is just so, so poor to lose after fashions of Khaled. It scored a good goal after some good play by Ryan Kent, who I thought alongside Alfredo Morelos looked much more like the old self. And obviously Malik Tillman again, I, I tweeted out after, I don't think anyone else in the squad could could do that, has the technical capability and the speed of thought to just um, do something that you don't even consider when you're watching it could be a potential. Um, but he, he just moves so quickly. And um, yeah, him playing higher up after the break, I think certainly helped uh, Rangers to, to turn the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, lots of comments uh, coming in here. I'll try and get to a few of them. First of all, this shows the dedication. Love stories like this. George says, uh, arrived home 2.30 a.m. this morning. It was minus 10 travelling back to Lancashire from Ibrooks, but well worth it to see the famous win. Uh, absolutely uh, fantastic. Um, this question here, Tillman for me, I think, was, was man of the match. Joshua, uh, two assists. Uh, uh, he really is a class act. But uh, Ian Robertson says, uh, thought Tillman was terrible in the first half, had a great second half, just looking for some consistency. I think it ties in with what we've been talking about is his first full season in, in senior football. He has a young lad. Um, we've got to give him time and, and patience sometimes. But when he's on it, he's, he's arguably the best player in Scotland. He, the, the, his close control is exquisite. He sets that winner up for Alfredo Morelos by it. He's great in the air, as we've seen with the goal for Ryan Jack. He just Players just can't get the ball off him as well. He's got a, a physical presence, doesn't he? So uh, uh, what do you make of this, that he was terrible in the first half? I think that's maybe slightly harsh. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess what do you want from a player? He, he, what player is um, able to produce those moments consistently through a 90 minutes? I, agree. I, I don't think Rangers were good in the first half, which is maybe what... Uh, Ian, Ian's alluding to and, and Tillman was playing in a slightly different position slightly deeper the speed of play wasn't as good um, again there'll be lots of examples of, of this on the website um, but Tillman you know, again to reiterate a point we, we have many times Tillman's 20 this is his first professional season um, yeah. and he's producing think of all the big moments that he's produced 
go back to the last home game at Ibrox in the league, that Hearts winner yesterday. You're right, Derek. Not only does he, he get the assist to level the game, but he's the one that produces the bit of quality to create that chance. Not out of nothing, but again, I don't think anyone else in the squad possesses that that speed of action and, and speed of thought. Um, and, and he's 20, and I, I think he, he will only get better. So um, I, I think he's suffered at points definitely from the fact that what's going on around him, the fact he's come into a team that, that hasn't been performing anywhere near the, the levels they can reach. Um, and he's had to become a leader quite quickly if, if you think about the, the other attackers around him who haven't been performing to their levels. Saying that, as I, I thought Kent was much better um, uh, yesterday. It's been really interesting because I always thought under Van Bronckhorst, is he, is he better out wide? Are you better isolating him? And increasingly, I think my opinion and many people's opinions maybe change when you see how he combines with people and, and how he, he maybe just is better when he has a lot of solutions around him. Because there was a few, there, there was one shot he took um, after he turned away, and obviously he was playing in that kind of number 10 position in the first half. And it was more reminiscent of the player he was becoming towards the end of Gerard and Beale's era when he thought. That was him coming into his prime and, and he'd really matured from the player in his first couple of seasons who had those moments, but they were sporadic, even if he, you know, he does keep going and, and keep taking the ball. So I, I agree with you. I thought Tillman was very good. Morelos as well, for me, just looked more engaged. Um, I know that's quite simple to say. On and off the ball, I, I thought he was a lot better. Um, Tavernier getting on the last line was was really effective. And and again, I haven't watched the game back this morning and just kind of writing a piece looking at because Beal came into the press conference and he effectively spoke about the changes made at halftime tactically, but also trying to reaffirm to the players what type of game, type of football do you want to play? And, and um, yeah, it was it was quite apparent, it was quite different after the break and Rangers probably should have went and added a, a fourth on a, a couple of occasions, which would have obviously made it a bit more comfortable. Equally there, you're right, you can't ignore the defensive fragilities um, in the first half, even if if you've got two centre-backs, does that. If it's Conor Goldson and Ben Davies, do you concede, especially that second goal? I, I don't think you do. Um, but no. yeah, Hibs, are, Hibs always seem to be quite close at Ibrox, and that's what Kevin Nisbet was alluding to in the, in the press conference after the game, um, similar to last season when it was, a, I think it was a late goal from Alfredo Morelos again to, to get the win for Rangers. Yeah, listen, their injury ravaged uh, as well, Hibs, at, at the moment. They're in a poor run of form. Uh, Colin Cooper gets in touch. It was three assists for Malik. Of course, he had that touch that, that changed the direction of the flight of the ball that, that, that Nisbet latched onto. So, uh, yeah, technically, it is uh, three, Colin. Um, let's get to a few more of these. Um, William says, uh, Beal said that uh, Cholak would have started if he was fit. Would he have played instead of Morelos or alongside him? Uh, well, probably alongside Joshua. Yeah, I think. that's what he yeah. said. He was he was asked about it, and, and King and Cholak were both supposed to start, and and he was asked effectively would Cholak have been in place of uh, Morelos or alongside him because Sakala had only played thirty minutes. You'll remember at the weekend. Yeah. Um, and in the press conference after Beal had kind of said that was a plan, he was substituted on, but he was substituted off. So no, the plan was to play Cholak and, and Morelos together, which uh, which is interesting. Um, I think Rangers benefited from Sakala there because Hibs played maybe slightly higher than anticipated. Although they were they were defending, they were um, playing a relatively high line, which obviously comes back to to bite them for the third goal. But it looks like Cholak and Morelos will be trialed at home, and and I thought the structure looked good, especially in that second half, especially down the left with the combinations between Kamara and and. Um, and Devine, who we must mm. uh, mention because I thought he did, again, playing re out of position. Uh, it didn't really look like it. he was awarded the man of the match. Um, and Kent as well. Devine, his, his runs in behind were, were, were timed really well. A few, you could see his, his left foot was weaker than his right. <clears throat> um, but yeah, overall, to be thrown into that type of game, again, with the anxiety at half time and the potential for it to go wrong. Uh, Beal said before the game, the message is that, that we trust him and um, yeah, he was, he was repaid by that because I thought Devine did really well. Yeah, for me, it's it's the composure on the ball for, uh, that, that I was impressed with. Um, he doesn't look flustered. He looks assured. He's more than willing to, to help uh, in the attacking sense as well. Uh, I was really impressed with young uh, Adam Devine last night for a young lad as well. I mean, it's, he's only played a handful of games for, for Rangers, so... Um, I thought he was he was fantastic, and I don't have any qualms about him playing uh, at Pataudry on Tuesday night, which which ties in with this comment from Ian McDougall, uh, Joshua, with Yilmaz out for another five weeks. Does Devine keep that spot even when Bonner returns? Um, listen, I think it's his jersey just now. Um, Redfern, that was a uh, that was a bit of depressing news last night from the press conference. That is, it's the worst possible hamstring injury that, yeah. that he's suffered. So I mean, I think he's halfway. 
uh, through a 12 week uh, process. I think he's at week five or six, if I'm not mistaken. Week six, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, listen, Divine, if he keeps up that level of performance, uh, I think Bond's got a, a job in his hands getting that shirt back. Yeah. I mean, there was positions that Divine got into that you saw if it's a left footer there or someone who's more comfortable on that side, it's, it's more dangerous. Um, and I think, especially when you're trying to break a team down to have that kind of natural width to stretch teams. But, um, he didn't play. I think uh, Bill compared him to John Flanagan, not compared him to John Flanagan, but a left footer, a right footer at left back yeah, 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 um, yeah. earlier in the week. And he didn't play the role like that. He, you know, he wasn't tucking in and playing out to a winger. He was often the widest player um, playing inside. And there, there was one pass in particular. I think it was for Kamal. I think it was when the game was two all. Um, again, just going back to that play down the left and in, in the second half where Rangers created so many overloads and, and looked so dangerous. He was able to play a couple of those passes inside when Rangers uh, got an extra man over and Kamara and Kent rotated. I, I thought they worked so well in tandem together, Kamara and Kent. And Kamara just looks so much more natural playing a role that, I, let's be honest, that suited them coming towards the ball, still going in behind at points, but again, playing closer to his teammates and and um, with with more opportunities uh, to combine. So I, I do agree. I, I think Divine is his place to lose. Obviously, his more natural position is um, right, right back. Um, but again, to, to go back to what Beal said, if it was on his other side, effectively, he was saying he, he could have had a few assists. And it was his it was his ball and his left foot they put in that Sakala got the header from. Um, yeah, it was Kamara that, that won the corner, that won the goal as, as Rangers uh, got a lot of joy down that left-hand side. So yeah, D Divine was man of the match. And, and I, I think given the context of um, starting out of position in the league in that type of game, uh, it, it was well deserved, even though Tillman and Kent and Morels and, and others were, were impressive and ultimately the, the match winners. Yeah, Jim says Bona is back for, for him. His experience is needed with us having to make other defensive changes. Yeah, I get your point, Jim. Um, but I thought uh, young Adam Devine did, uh, did himself no harm whatsoever last night, uh, that's for sure. Um, lots of comments coming in. Um, we'll touch on a few more of them here. Firstly, David Kerr gets in touch. This doesn't sound too good. Sorry for being late, but this slip disc is just brutal, Troops. Great win, guys. Um, yeah, this, this doesn't sound too too healthy there, David. Hopefully you're on the yeah, on the men soon. Just take it easy, buddy. Um, John Johnson gets in touch. Hats off to Kamara. He was a baller last night. His wee roulette spin on the edge of the Higgs, Hibs box was, was, was fire. Mm. Yeah, that, that was back. He looked... Uh, it just it looked more like the Kamara we, we all know he, he can be Joshua yeah. doesn't he I, I don't know if it's at the Michael Beal effect or, or what have you but he did talk about uh, re removing that handbrake prior to kick off and he certainly looked like someone who was looking to get involved uh, in an attacking sense a lot Ryan Jack was obviously that insurance policy if you like just playing in a slightly deeper role but um thought Kamara was, was pretty decent last night yeah, I mean, I think that if you watched that game last night compared to the game against Hearts, what's that, about not quite a month ago, just under a month ago, the style's completely different. Um, even if you just go back and watch 20 minutes, you, you, you'll see Tillman and Kamara. I think it was Tillman and, it was Tillman and Lundstrom who were the kind of advanced midfielders. And they're always trying to run beyond the striker. Players aren't playing close together. There's, there's a lot more width. Uh, the fullbacks are pushing up at times, but they're always deeper than, than wingers. So I think it's just the overall style suits him. Yes, I think the kind of um, aggressive high line, uh, counter pressing style fits uh, Kamara, and but it's mainly the ability to not not build up slow because Van Bronckhorst football was called slow. But I, I think it's kind of slower with the purpose at points. It's about moving the opposition to then go and uh, create openings. Uh, I, Rangers being in control, I guess Bill would say, and and again to quote him playing. I like the big team and, and Kamara is perfectly suited like that because he can go beyond and it's not as if he's someone who doesn't have the feet that the comment mentions or the ability to create or go beyond players but his game I don't think is what Van Bronckhorst used him in domestically which is always running beyond and, and almost making those second striker runs so I, I just think the the style suits him more and, and again the same for for, for Kent um, who played centrally in the first half and then moved out to the left and in the second took a lot of hits um, throughout the game, but but just keeps going and and we should talk about Morelos as well, Derek, because he gets the winner. Um, there's a couple of moments as well in the first half where he, where he came close. For me, that was his his best performance in in a while. And I, I think the issue always with him towards the end of Van Bronckhorst's 
uh, era was. You know, I, I remember when um, the game against St Mirren, he switched the ball out of play at one point, and Van Bronckhorst, who didn't of, often get visibly angry, turned to the bench and told Robbie Orr to but warm up. Mirren, yeah, yeah, and and I don't know if that was just to to kind of you know coax Morelos into to playing a playing a bit better. But you think how is if there is any opportunity of Rangers keeping Morelos for for long term or for sell on value, how does that happen? And and there is now a, with Beal using two strikers at least at home it looks like domestically, um, able to get them both in the team. There is a bit of a template for him to play more football perhaps alongside uh, Cholak. And and you see the benefit of playing two goal scorers last night. That chance that Sakala has it isn't a necessarily a high value chance. I don't think if that's someone like a an R field or another midfielder in that position he necessarily scores. So yeah, it shows the benefit of having more goal scorers on the pitch again, which is something that Beal's spoken about quite a lot in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, that's a yeah, Cala chance. That, yeah. It was a 0.08 XG and when he hit it it was a 0.6. So uh, to, to, that tells you how uh, good a strike it was from from Sakala. Uh, that analysis, folks, um, will, will be on the site uh, shortly after this video. So so keep your eyes peeled for that as we delve into the detail of last night's win. Um, Craig Hutton said uh, Morelos looked sharper uh, and slimmer. He was coming in for a bit of criticism at half time. I noticed, especially on social mm -hmm. media, I thought he'd done okay. Um, he wasn't the worst player on the park, but yeah, certainly that goal and the winning goal will do him the world of good. And he, you can't help but, but love the celebration the knee slide and the fans chanting his name again um, will do him the world of good, I think, as well. So long may that continue from Alfredo. He's got a long way to go to um, to, to build that, that that trust again, I think, uh, amongst the, the supporters um, after what has been a very abject season for him so far. But uh, if he continues scoring winners and, and goals like that, uh, then uh, I think that will do him no harm whatsoever. Um, lots of questions coming in here. Um, Matthew Ross says, I enjoyed it, the front line rotation. It's something we didn't do under Gio. I noticed that, Joshua, last night. I'm sure you did too. Loved that Ryan Kent just picking up pockets of space all over that that front line. Uh, as a defend If you're a defender for Hibs, then it will cause you all sorts of issues. When you, Who's going to pick him up and what have you? But that uh, combination play uh, was pleasing to see. Uh, yeah, it's a great point by Matthew because I think that Again, we've only got two games and one of them was a friendly. But the thing that's interested me um, the most when you're looking at Beal and Gerrard and what's going to be different, because obviously there was issues towards the end under Gerrard and you can't just you know come and reinstate that style of football with the same players, I think, and and, it, and expect there's not be any difficulties. And, and it's been the rotation and the kind of flexibility um, or fluidity of the, of the front three. Last night at points, you see Sakala or Kent picking the ball up wide uh, on the left. Morello's doing the same on the right. And I think what that does is it means that if, if you have that framework and that clear idea of how you want to play, but then you can also have an element of, of surprise within that and defenders being faced with different tasks. Maybe at one point a fullback's defending another fullback, at another point a winger's out there uh, going 1v1 against them. Because under Van Bronckhorst, you had at points, I guess, uh, in Europe, that unpredictability. But then when you came into domestic games, there wasn't that clear, successful, def definable style. Um, under Gerard towards the end, I think it became too predictable. So if Beal can kind of get the, the happy medium where you look at his team and you know how they're going to play, but as Matthew alludes to, it's not rigid and players obviously have that freedom. And we know that because he, he said it numerous times. I think it was the Sky interview at the, the weekend when he said he thinks Morelos and Kent are both at their best when they're completely free. And, and Kent, I thought it was one of his best performances in a while last night. Um because he was able to pick up the ball in so many areas, but also because he was playing closer to his teammates and not as isolated, which, as I say, I, I always thought maybe under Van Bronckhorst that was a benefit because he can go either way and he's so hard to defend. Um, but yeah, I, my, my, I think my opinion, along with probably a lot of other people, is starting to change just because last night I thought he looked much more like his, his old yeah. self, like he was towards the end of the, the last title winning season. Yeah, I've got a question here. I'm going to pose to you, Joshua, from Andy Davey. Can you explain the XG to an old bear? <laughs> Over to you. Expect to go. So um, you used the Sakala shot, Derek, yeah. earlier as, a, as an ex example. So Sakala's goal, Andy. The expectation based on, and this is based on numerous things, um, they take that chance, they look at the number of defenders in front of them, the position of the goalkeeper, the position of his teammates, but effectively the area of, of, of where the shot's been taken and, and 
based on thousands of other shots that are generated in this model, what is the expectation that that goes in out of 100 times? So 0.08 is, is not very high. A shot from outside the box might be a 0.02 or a 0.03. Um, but it's just a, a barometer. You know, someone like Sakala, as we just mentioned, he might be able to take greater advantage of a 0.08 expected goal shot than um, a, a defender. James Sands' left foot shot from outside the box, for example, uh, was was uh, was not likely to go in. So it's, it's just helpful because... As opposed to saying Rangers had 20 shots, that could be 20 shots from outside the box. What's the likelihood of those turning into goals? Not that likely. Or you could have five shots, but those five shots could all be of a higher value, closer to goal, with less defenders in the way. Um, and, and the stats bomb one that we use, which is on the website, is, is the most advanced one because yeah. um, it considers, then you've got, I won't go too far into this, but you've got post-shot XG, mm -hmm. which then considers... How, how effectively how well the player's taken the chance, how well the keeper's performed. So you mentioned that's the Callow one, Derek. I'd imagine a big reason it was so hard to stop was purely because of the power he got behind that. Yeah. And one of the things that Stats Bomb is is able to measure is, is shot uh, velocity, which um, obviously is, is important because it comes into whether a keeper can save it or not. So hopefully yeah. that was... Uh, uh, well described. Yeah, yes, that was a fantastic explanation. But as Craig Andrews says, final stat, 3-2. That is all that matters at the end of the day. Big hello to Paul Sturrock uh, gets in touch. Uh, been to hospital for an 8 o'clock appointment now in Starbucks watching three points in the bag and we move on. And I wanted to get your thoughts on this, Joshua, because um, uh, Michael Beale did discuss this last night. Uh, quite a controversial uh, topic, it's fair to say. With Porteous' performance last night, should we go after him? Now, he was asked about this, Michael Beale, uh, on BBC Sports Sound last night. He said he's not someone we've spoken about to be honest, we've not spoken about any targets right now. The club had some targets they maybe had in mind. I've come in. I want to work with this group. Everything has been a bit of a whirlwind over the last two weeks. My focus has firmly been on this group. I think Ryan is a good young player. He sort of played in a new position tonight. Fair play to him. He scored a goal, and I've seen him come through, really. I was here when he made his debut, and he's gone on to play for Scotland. But at the moment, I think he's part of their squad, and I wouldn't want to speculate on that. I know it's come out that he's not going to sign a contract. That means he must have something on his mind. If that's the case, that wouldn't be Rangers, as we haven't discussed it yet. That sort of puts it to bed, but he is an admirer of um, of uh, Ryan Porteous. Uh, he played midfield last night, of course. Um, what did you make of him, uh, Joshua? I thought he was pretty good in midfield, considering it's not his position. And obviously, when you you seen that goal go in, and uh, you thought it had to be him because of, I guess, all the the talk and his and his previous history with, um, you know, notable moments against uh, Rangers. It was a comment after the was it the prem the cup semi final, wasn't it? Um, that I think wound up and uh, definitely wound up a few people. Uh, but Beal, I guess Beal's comments as you say put it to bed um yeah. that uh, equally if if there was something going on behind the scenes i don't think he's going to come out and, and say that in an interview you know no one knew about the team news the day before in the press conference sometimes managers don't say what they don't want to say but i mean, i'd be I, i'd be surprised if, if he did end up at ibrox and um, but um, I, th I thought he, he did pretty well in midfield last night given that wasn't his isn't his natural position yeah, RFC56 says, you should feel ashamed, Derek, by asking that. I don't apologize. No. We'd just like to, to, to answer, ask the, the, just the questions that are posed in the comment section that I like to involve as, as much as possible. Right, so right, I, right. I do apologize right. uh, for, for bringing that up. And, uh, and hello to uh, Darcy Smith, who gets in touch. Uh, uh, she says that she is a, a Huddersfield Town fan. Of course, Kenny Miller down there, his first team coach, yeah. uh, joined up in the last uh, couple of weeks. So, Wish Kenny all the best down there, uh, teaming up with Mark Fotheringham uh, down there at Huddersfield. Uh, good club, uh, the Terriers. Um, so I uh, hope they have a, a good season uh, from here on in. Uh, let's get to a few more of these uh, questions. Uh, Quantum Skyline gets in touch firstly, Joshua. He says, uh, Josh agreed to having been at Ibrox last night. Uh, the game was okay, but that was the coldest he's ever felt at the fit. I couldn't feel my feet by halftime. How cold was it, Joshua? Yeah, well, we were saying this before we came on. Um, first half, I was actually okay. And I was thinking, have I have I dodged it? Um, and then by the end of the game, I was so cold. And uh, But i tell, tell you what, you like this, uh, Derek. David Edgar, good friend of the show, had a heated uh, cushion with him. So, wow. Yeah, that's how that's how he, he kept himself warm. But, yeah. I mean, it was so cold. I was doing the TikTok at the end. Um, yeah, I could and, see your breath. It was, it was almost like starving their eyes. It was. I had to. I had to stop it a few times because I was so cold, and if you just kind of fogged up the camera, 
So um, yeah, it was. I, I, I will. I don't think we'll be at a colder football game than that for a while um, mm. until Ross County probably actually on the on the twenty third or Aberdeen oh. next week. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a cold one. You can, you can. God, I'm getting just chilly just thinking about that. Uh, Andy Mack says, Union Bears were superb last night. Yeah, but I have to take my hat off to them. A great display again, celebrating yeah. their 15-year anniversary. Um, the, nobody does displays like them. Another fantastic TIFO, wasn't it, Joshua? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was um, you, Where I was sitting, you couldn't quite work it out until I've yeah. seen a photo of it from the, the other side, of from from the Copeland side of the stadium. But... Um, yeah, it was it was it was impressive. One of many uh, impressive TIFO displays, um, yeah. which always obviously helps create a fantastic atmosphere before the game. And then then there was there was other things as well uh, when the game started, and then at halftime as well. So it, it was a great yeah, game. Yeah. It, was, it was a really good occasion. And and um, you know when Sakala scored, the stadium really got up for it. And then him scoring, yeah. um, I, I think everyone was just stopping celebrating by the time that Nisbet puts the ball in, in the back yeah. of the net. Um, but yeah, it was it was a fantastic atmosphere, especially when Morello scores that winner. So good yeah. to have a night that I think did it did justice to to the occasion of a, a new era uh, and a new manager. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Certainly, plenty to work on. Michael Wheel did touch on that in his post match interview. I don't think anyone was getting carried away uh, defensively. He did say he has to get his uh, centre backs back, uh, and I'd imagine Ben Davis will be. Um, well, we'll have more training sessions, as will Connor Golson, uh, of course. So I think at least one of them will be playing on Tuesday at Pataudry. Derek Hood says, uh, thanks for the explanation on the XG, Joshua. It was clear and concise, but I still don't have a clue what you're talking about. So uh, okay. <laughs> number one at all, Derek. Um, That's but, what I was going for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, excellent stuff. Right, folks, I think <laughs> that will do us there. Thanks to everyone for getting in touch with the programme as ever. It's greatly appreciated. Um, what? Will, uh, just a reminder, the Christmas offer we've got on the website, just a pound for two months worth of content it's packed full of rangers uh content on there at the moment so much to, to keep me amused uh just a pound for two months as i say just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details and you can see the little banner on your screen as well uh, if you can subscribe to our youtube channel also uh over ten thousand uh, now subscribing so thanks very much for for your support we'll be back again on Monday, looking ahead to that game on Tuesday. They're coming thick and fast yep. now. Um, but until then, enjoy your Friday and your weekend.